Hello everybody, welcome back. We have another quick video for structural analysis. This one's going to be on frames today, very similar to the previous two we've done. Just some new equations that we're going to be throwing in uh, and a little bit of a trick with uh, internal hinges when it comes to frames. We're going to talk about all that in this video. So what we talked about in the last video was what instability and determinacy really meant. And the procedure and process of determining the structure's determinacy. Uh, so why determinacy is important, once again, is so we can understand whether or not it is feasible to solve using equilibrium equations, or if the structures are indeterminate, we need to use different solving methods. And we also talked about instability, and if a structure is unstable, that means there is either an external or internal instability within the structure, meaning that there will be translation or rotation about the entire structure upon construction. So now that we have all of these things covered, in this video, we're going to be dealing with a rigid frame which has these new compatibility equations for determinacy. And frames are pretty much just straight members connected by uh, rigid moment resistant connections. And sometimes they have the addition of hinges uh, to form a stable configuration. Now these rigid joints are used to prevent relative translation and rotation at the connection. Thus an X, Y, and a couple moment will be produced uh, at the present locations. So the formulas were derived based on this understanding and they pretty much come from the fact that each of these members are going to have that internal X, Y, and moment produced. And also at the joint, there's going to be those reactions as well, an X and Y and a resisting moment, okay? Furthermore, the equations simplify uh, conditions when we have the internal hinge, as I specified earlier, leaving us with these derived formulas. But one condition of this internal hinge variable is that it's dictated by the number of members that are connected to the hinge. And the formula is dictated by the number of members connected to the hinge minus one. And the way I like to think about this or rationalize it is if we imagine we had two members, we're gonna have those reactions in one, and then the opposite member, those reactions are going to be known. So we have two for two, and if you simplify it, you'll be having a EC equal to two minus one, which is equal to one. So by the similar logic, uh, if we had several members uh, connected at a hinge, then the number of equations of condition at the hinge are going to equal the number of members meeting at this joint minus one. So now that that's simplified, we can actually hop in to solving both these problems. So if we take a look at this first one, the first thing we should do is identify the reactions. So we have a pin connection here. We have two, another pin over here, which is another two, a fixed connection, which has three, and then the row support, which has one. So that means the number of reactions is going to be two plus two plus three plus one, which is going to equal eight. Now we can identify the number of joints. Each support is going to count as a joint and each rigid connection is going to count as a joint as well. So that means the number of joints in total here is going to be six. Moving on, we have the number of members, which is easy. Where these joints are, are going to count as disconnects between members. So we have one, two, three, four, and five for a total of five for M. And then we have no joints or no hinges in this problem. Therefore, we can use the equation. We have three M, which is five plus r, which is eight. And then we have to figure out if it's going to be equal to the other side. We're gonna check three j, which is six, plus zero. We'll be left with 18 here on the right side. And then we have eight plus 15, which is 23 on the other. Therefore, we can say that this is greater on the left than it is the right. Therefore, we can say that it is indeterminate indeterminate and the degree of indeterminacy is going to be 23 minus 18 so 23 minus 18 will equal 5 so the degree of indeterminacy will equal 5. Now for the second part of the problem or the second problem in general uh, we have a very similar thing where we have to identify all of our reactions so each of these fixed supports are going to have three therefore r will equal three times four in this case. So we're gonna be left with 12. 
moving on to joints, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine, 10, 11. So 11 joints. Number of members as well. You can count them out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. We have 12 joints. Now for EC, as we mentioned earlier, EC is gonna be dictated by the number of members connected at that hinge. So we have one, two, three, and four members connected. So we have four minus one, and this is gonna give us three. Now, once again, we're plugging into that same equation. We have three, 12 plus 12, and we will check the equality after three times 11 plus the three for EC. It's gonna give us 48, which is greater than 36, meaning we are once again indeterminate. And we take 48 minus 36 for the degree of indeterminacy, and that is gonna to equal to 12. And having an indeterminate frame is super common. Uh, you will see that pretty frequently in the problems that you're gonna be doing. Uh, which is kind of the whole point of uh, the structural analysis course in the first place. Uh, I just added a note up here as well, talking about stability. All the requirements are going to be the same. If you imagine we had uh, like four rollers supporting this structure, there's going to be no way to resist an X component of force. So that means the structure would translate. So the same requirements are going to be there for stability as well, similar to like the trust video that we covered previously. So that's it for determinacy. Uh, next video, we're going to be covering some analysis procedures, which is where the course gets interesting, right? So I hope this helped. Thanks.